Starting All right, everyone, go ahead for Army. Doug, can you uh, explain to us the process by which you called up uh, Walker? And I guess you, you just announced that you, you signed uh, the goalie, John Jones. Yeah, yeah, I can go through everything. I Actually, since we talked last week, I feel like Dr. Fauci talking to you guys once a week about medical issues here. Uh, so uh, Gillies is called up because Huso is out with a lower body injury and Wallman's out with an upper body injury. Uh, they're getting tested today, so we'll have an update on them on uh, Friday uh, when we get all that information. Uh, back sort of for, for cap issues, uh, both of our remaining goalies, because of their structured contracts where their bonuses take them slightly over 850, uh, we had to sign somebody that was making 850 or less. So Gillies was playing in the American Hockey League on an, on an AHL contract. We signed him. Uh, he'll be in tonight uh, and be ready to, to partner tomorrow with Lindgren. And uh, we'll just take it day by day from there to, to where, where Villy is. And uh, we're hoping to get uh, Bennington back uh, early, early to late next week. Uh, with Walker, because we played short last night, uh, we were able to bring up Walker for today's game. Uh, but because of the rules, we got another injury. We have to play short again tomorrow. Uh, and then if we have no injuries, we can be back to full strength on, on Saturday. So uh, as of now, it looks like we have to play short again tomorrow uh, because of the way the, the CBA is written. Um, you know, on the, on the COVID front, it's, a, it's been a, obviously a slippery slope for us right now of our uh, – with our minor league team inactive because of COVID, we have uh, 13 employees down there with COVID, eight players. So when you look at the you look at our current roster right now of eligible players uh, that could play hockey, 25% of our group has COVID right now. Uh, so it's just we're we're working through it. We're trying to to do the best we can to put a product on the ice that uh, is competitive. Obviously, I tip my hat to the guys what they did last night. Uh, Against a, a very good Florida team, really, what they've done uh, uh, since we since the COVID has uh, hit the, hit the guys on the last road trip, I think they've they've done a heck of a job. Doug, just to clarify, uh, when you're talking about you're talking about Springfield has 13 employees plus eight players. No, or no, employees yeah, uh, f between coaches, trainers, and players, 13 total. Okay, 13. Yeah. Okay. Doug, can you uh, update us on uh, Robert Thomas and David Perron? Uh, David Perron is uh, still day to day, and 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 same with Thomas. Uh, uh, they're get, they're both getting more tests done. Uh, neither of them are going to certainly play tomorrow. So, so the emergency rules, Doug, they they didn't allow you to call up like two forwards and one. <laughs> no, it was yeah, it was. It's it's a, obviously I find it strange the way it's written that you we, we played short last night, uh, they allowed us to bring up a guy so we don't have to play short two games in a row. But because another guy got hurt, we can't recall two guys. It's so we could actually so let's say somebody gets hurt, we'll have to play short. We'll have to play short until we go through a game where someone doesn't get hurt. Doug, similar question. The rules are what the rules are, but it just seems strange that your third goalie, Hofer, can't be called up because of his contract. Is there any explanation or reason why that 850 max is in place or any understanding of that? Well, I, I, it was it was done uh, in the last CBA uh, to, you know, so you didn't have to play short. I, uh, I think obviously the, the COVID situation has changed everything when we – we the, the league treats COVID as just like a like a normal injury, uh, and so the it, 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 it complicates things. Are you kind of learning this as you go along, or did you already well versed in all these rules as to what would have to happen in this situation? Uh, I would say I, I had general knowledge of it. I, it's like anything you you when it affects you, you dig in deeper. Uh, like the rule last night, I, I thought because we we played short and we got an injury, we, we would be able to call up, you know, two guys. 
uh, I was told that that's not the case last night after. Uh, again, w this is all new. You know, right now we have nine, nine players in St. Louis out. Uh, so it's, it, it is what it is. You, you, sort of, you sort of learn on the fly. Uh, again, I think it stems back to, to the injuries that we have and, and, and plus the COVID. And, uh, you know, COVID's treated like any injury. Uh, some guys will, can play through injuries, but you the, obviously the league doesn't allow you to play through COVID. So, so Doug, like, uh, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. So, so like last night when Huso gets hurt, or is that like almost the worst case scenario, knowing what's going on? Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> uh, you know, I. I, I called Charlie after the game. I said that had to be the easiest win he's gotten in his NHL career. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, we were able to sign a goalie and, and, and get somebody in. And it, But obviously it's never good when, you're, when your number one and number two goalie are out. But it's a great opportunity for Charlie and, quite honestly, for Gillies, who, who wants to get back to the NHL. We have, uh, we have three games and four nights, and obviously it's the coach's decision on, on who plays and – and if, if Huso is not ready in that time, he may even get an NHL game. Doug, this may be an impossible question, but is there any sense of how long it might take Bennington to get up and running? Obviously, Huso bounced back pretty, pretty quickly, but I'm sure each guy is different. Yeah, uh, my understanding, JR, and again, uh, the guys that are getting COVID in our group uh, aren't getting uh, severe symptoms. So we're, we're hoping that... Uh, as early as maybe on Tuesday and, and at the late end on Friday. Again, it's just going to be an energy issue and when he gets to face some shots. And uh, But we, we we can't be penny-wise, pound-foolish with, with any of these guys coming back from COVID. There's no sense getting them out there and having them get injured and then start rolling down this this road again. So whether it's uh, Bozak, who I think is the first guy to come off on the weekend, uh, you know, we got to make sure that, that he's mentally uh, prepared and physically prepared to play. Uh, you know, I think Huso took a couple extra days and Krug jumped right in. So, again, uh, it's just an indication of when they, wh where we think they're at. And again, we don't want to put them, put someone in, in a difficult spot. It's, you know, that, that's the issue right now. We're, we're taxing, you know, not just 18, now we're taxing 17 players on back to back nights, and we don't want to then put a guy in there and, and if he's not prepared to play, and lose him for that game and maybe longer. Doug, so even with Walker, your your player shard on Thursday, and then what happens on the weekend? Are you still a player shard? Are you hoping Bozak or well, one of the injured guys will come back? <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, we're we're hoping like it, uh, JT. If nothing changed, if if nobody else was healthy, and we don't have any injuries Thursday, because we play short, we can call another guy up from the minors. Uh, but if we play tomorrow and someone else gets injured, that player has to sit out. We can call another guy up and still have to play short. Is that about as clear, very, is, is that about as, clear as mud? It's very confusing as your head exploding <laughs> with all this. And I, I know you've, you've been through a lot of stuff in your career, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I, again, it's the the COVID aspect of it that 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 is uh, that is a little bit different for all of us right now, uh, and but it, you know just because it's it's not long enough to to put a guy on LTI, but but it's four games or five games, and when you get multiple COVIDs and then you add that on to the the six injuries that we have, it's you know it's 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 a lot of money that uh, and and it's a it's a positive thing. It's a positive thing that. That uh, we only have of, of our six skating injuries, only two have are on LTI. That's not a negative because that means they're they're hopefully going to be back sooner than later. But it does it does handicap what you can do. Doug, well, no no fault of putting uh, Perron on LTI. He's just too valuable to commit to putting him on the sideline for that long, right? Yeah, like if if we get if we get closer to it, uh, uh, but right now our, our yeah to. to to guarantee he has to miss ten games is, is too big of a stretch to to get a to, to pull somebody up for for this situation. He's too valuable, yes. Doug, I almost, you know, hesitate to even 
ask just because of what you guys are going through and gritting out wins like you did last night, but just how do you look at this team big picture after 25 games, even if you can do that? I don't even know if you can make a fair evaluation. Yeah, I, I think what we've, we've tested our depth. Uh, I think it's great to see how, how Brownie's come up, uh, the work that he put in. Uh, it was a whirlwind training camp for him. He starts in Ottawa, uh, ends up here, gets a game or two. You know, our roster was pretty well set. He goes down. He's played really well. I, I actually told him I didn't think we'd give him this opportunity until the new year. We wanted him to get a really good foundation, but opportunity knocked, and I think he's taken great advantage of it. I would say also uh, Dak has played, uh, Joshua has played very good for us too. So we're, we're seeing growth from some of these players. I think Rosen's come up and, and really opened our eyes to what he can do. Uh, with our with our roster the way it started the season, we liked our forward depth. Our defense was going to be a uh, work in progress. I think that's still the case with the with uh, two players that weren't in our opening night roster, uh, uh, Mikola and uh, uh, Scott Prunovich coming in and playing very well. So there's going to be great competition when we get healthy there. And uh, at that time, we'll have different decisions to make of having too many bodies. Uh, I'd probably rather have that. Uh, that mountain to have to climb than, than not having enough bodies, though. But, uh, JR, it is hard to say who we are and what we are, but I do like the resiliency that we've shown to this point. And, Doug, do you remember from the summer what you liked about Lindgren, why he, why he was signed? Uh, I got to say that was Kevin McDonald's uh, and, and David Alexander' uh, responsibility to, to bring us those names and uh, – uh, so I, I got to say, Tom, I, I, I didn't spend a lot of time uh, watching tape on him. I, I left that to David, and we had a list of goalies, and he said he was the one that uh, he recommended we sign, and so we did. Did you like or have you liked what you've seen from Huso this year, especially he's strung together, you know, consistent starts every night out, it seems like? Yeah, well, obviously we were excited about the way he had played up until the, the injury. Uh, it was a great opportunity, uh, you know, for him. Not good for the team, obviously, uh, and he wouldn't wish that on Binner. But uh, I thought he played fantastic, and every second he's played uh, since the injury, he played very well before that. That's the goalie that I thought uh, that we saw down in the American Hockey League, and uh, getting his feet wet last year and and getting that opportunity, he certainly looks like he's a, a more than a, a highly competent NHL goalie. Is that it, guys? Sounds like it is. All right, fellas. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, Harvey. Thanks, Doug. Bye. Bye.